June. This is the end of the last day of May. We are currently attempting to get a definition of time. In order to get the proper definition of time, it is necessary to choose a path of development in order to approach this question logically. I have taken extraordinary pains to distinguish two classes of approach to get the definition of time or in fact of any basic aspect of reality which is where science is at now now that we've discovered the universe all the way to the edge and we've discovered the inner limit of matter and have come up against energy which is the domain of time as you'll find out now that that's happened which was in the 20th century and now we're in the 21st century and it looks like science has failed it's easy to overlook the fact that science has failed for two reasons one of which is that technology has been miraculously successful even to the extent of getting into outer space and now the subatomic particle physicists are claiming that there is a possibility to get a different type of computer which you've heard of because you're not allowed to not hear of it so that tells you something already the two classes of approach to get to the end of science to get the results that humans want the two classes of approach are the traditional approach which were all victims of that and there's another approach and that is the right one using the system of approach defined by the oracle itself that we're interrogating you don't hear physicists talk this way very much because they are always referring to their pocketbook in terms of the services they render to the government in order to have better and better technology. That's the first class of approach to physics and reality money the government the world expediency and I've gone to extraordinary pains in the month of May certainly to point out to you the fatal lethal course that that class of approach entails there is no exception to that because you will be deceived you are deceivable you have been deceived and so was I and that's how I know however everyone is aware to one degree or another that in order to violate logic in order to violate the scientific method in order to violate the scientific process and to violate the goals of humanity and to violate the universe as far as we humans are capable of coming into a relationship with it of some kind as long as there is this class of approach that is capable of violating every known logical rational reasonable approach to reality in the universe therefore something was violated that is the other approach okay that 
is extremely simple. The reason I am couching this extraordinary dichotomy into an emotional division is because your life depends on whom you believe now. You either will believe me or you will believe what's been planted in your head. In this case, we need to be specific in order to be rational. We are talking about the line, the straight line. When did humanity discover that? What happened after humanity discovered the line and where has it led? In order to answer that question in a reasonable fashion, in a YouTube presentation, having given 560 presentations so far, I'm going to summarize in two minutes what you must absolutely accept or get lost. You have to believe me. You don't have to believe anybody. I'm actually giving you a choice as to whom to believe. But if you don't know what the choice is now, then you never will. You will never understand what your choice is right now. I'm going to assume that you still don't know. And that is necessary in science because science must be presented in a way that underscores the fact that what you're saying can be proved. It's no good to insist that you have the truth or you're doing things right or please listen to me instead of someone else. That is the first class approach. The second class approach is to actually get it right. In order to do that, I engaged the absolute axiomatic basis of science, which is the line. So we're going to go through this so quickly that it's going to make your head spin. So I already asked you and demanded of you and frightened you into, hopefully, so you'll be serious, get ready, buckle in, turn on your mind, and turn off your emotions. So will I. Starting right now at eight and a half minutes into this presentation. This is the last presentation before the official Unimetric series. This is my third semi-formal presentation of the definition of time. I never got a response to my first two definitions, one of which was at Christmas of 2022, the second of which was at Christmas of 2023. I'm not going to wait until Christmas of 2024 to try again with the retarded American population. And I am posturing. You know that if you've been tuning in. So what is the correct definition of time? In order to get at it, we have to start with what is called a metaspace. And that is simply what you and I can do as humans. You empty your mind and create a blackboard. Inside that blackboard, you draw a line. I've already stated why you must draw a line and not start any other way. You cannot start with spheric space. You must start the way Euclid did, to give it a name. You must start with a line. 
And the reason is, and this has been verified by every level of science, you have to start with a line in order to manufacture from the universal instruction set the correct way to get the computable numbers. But it's an identity between a geometry and a system of numbers. That is the basis of science and the only basis of science. So this brings us all the way two millennia in advance to the present day. We still use the exact same line, no difference, and the number system has not changed. It was progressively discovered after Euclid, but it has never changed. The complex number system is a very interesting deviancy. I just want to dismiss it so that you can get it out of your mind in the correct way. It is a hybrid number system whose power comes from a combination of two components C and a square root function in linear space. That's all you need to know. You must accept that because your only alternative is to listen to all my previous lectures. So I'm summing it up for you. You can forget about the complex number system. And that's significant because it's the only other number system that's ever been developed on top of linear numbers. And it had to be on top. And that's my whole point is that in order to get the correct number system for the universe you must begin with the linear number system because they're derivative the number system we use is a derivative number system the proof of that is the fact that in order to use linear algebra you must have the calculus you must have the calculus you must know exactly how the calculus works and once you do you can get it curvature through your ass. You can understand curvature enough to make a machine understand it. That's all our scientists and physicists have ever asked. <clears throat> In the 20th century, we found out at the same time we were using calculus to make miracles in technology, simultaneously, ultra confusingly because it was simultaneous with a full exposure of the miraculous system of linear algebra with calculus giving us space travel giving us lasers harnessing electricity and giving us fission and fusion power every form of transportation and the ability to get to deep space in the planetary system to take photographs of neptune Uranus and Saturn Jupiter so linear algebra has definitely proved its worth now we need to understand the limitation linear algebra is a derivative of spherical algebra the linear number system is a derivative of the spherical number system and linear geometry is derivative of of the true geometry of the universe which nobody has ever even guessed at except there's a footnote we don't need the footnote i am the actuality of the second class of approach to how do we understand space-time and the quantum paradox and cosmology and reality we're going to get them all now in the name of time which nobody understands and everybody admits that they don't understand it Albert definitely admitted that what he did was he used time that he could not understand and developed it into a line so time officially according to Albert Einstein is linear if you don't understand what that means it you cannot possibly go on and you need to drop out and forget you ever saw my face but if you do understand what is meant in science 
as I just phrased it, to say that time is linear, then you're capable of going on. Because time is not linear. Time is not linear. Now, Albert Einstein said exactly that. But the way he said it was forced on him by a 2,000-year-old Bronze Age system of linear calculation. And so he composed the very first breach into the actual geometry of the universe. Albert Einstein came in through the back door. He used his incredible genius to visualize and then algebraicize and finally prove that there is a geometric relationship between linear space, which is not real, and time, which is obviously not real if it's related to unreal space. So neither time nor space in space-time are real. What we want is to get the actual relationship between real space and real time. Nobody has ever even thought of doing that. There are very powerful reasons which I've been able to uncover that I'm not going to expose you to now, although I have in the previous... 560 lectures there are powerful reasons why Euler could not see this fuck Euclid Einstein could not see this Gauss could not see it Lobachevsky Bolyai Feynman Heisenberg Dirac nobody can see this that you must change geometry to the universe geometry it's spherical it's spherical so we begin with the line in order to transform it into sphericity the Greeks gave up everybody gave up until Einstein who realized that time is also derivative in the same way that space has been artificially turned into a grid he said in his own mind, I can make this a hypergrid, a four-dimensional grid. That is insane! Except it's not insane for technology. So if you think that technology justifies Einstein, then you are out and you can go home and forget you ever saw my face. But if you're rational, if you're reasonable, if your heart is true and your mind is right, you know that it cannot be a grid and time cannot be the linear form that Einstein made it. And because space is not linear, it's never been linear. Why does it work? I proved that in 2022 with a rigorous set of scientific proof that the linear number system is embedded. It's embedded. All right, so the line is embedded in the universe. What shape is the universe? Is it linear? If you say yes, get lost. You don't know how to think. If you say no, it has to be at least curved, then you're okay. You can go on. So why do we use lines? Let me be frank to save time. It's because it works for technology. That means it works on Earth. But in the 20th century, we discovered the universe. If you don't understand that, get lost. You're not ready for this. 
Go back to your binky and your dollies. But if you realize that the universe is curved, Einstein proved it and everybody knows it now. If you accept that, then you must accept logic that the linear number system is outdated. It's archaic. I proved in 2022 that the linear number system that you and I were taught in school is the source of all the problems now. We have no problems at all in technology. What is technology? In our case, what we mean by technology is the use of mathematical geometry to get results. If you're trying to manufacture things, such as rockets to go to the moon, to Mars, or the stars, you will use linear algebra. You have no choice because machine logic can be transmitted by light to a spacecraft. It has to be machine logic. Machine logic is linear because it's zero one. That will never change for eternity. There is no possibility of changing machine logic. That has been proved. If you doubt that, pack your bags and get lost. You cannot keep up. But if you're still with me, now you know what I know, at least in a framework, that we must use linear numbers, linear numbers, in order to compose the number system that the universe uses, that the universe uses. Is it our linear numbers? Yes and no. But that's a poor answer. The correct answer is not yes and no. The correct answer for a morphologist, which I am the master of that subject, the answer is not yes and no. It's no and yes. Yes and no is one answer. No and yes is the opposite answer in superpositional space. That's the reason that nobody ever believed or understood or pursued or tried to develop the most obvious answer of all. That the linear numbers exist in a higher number space that is simpler. It is simpler. It's more direct. And the proof of that is light speed. Is that a number? Be cautious how you answer. Is light speed a number? What is light speed? Do you know? You'd better or get your ass out of here because you're just a child. You'd better if the fuck know what light speed is. What is it? There are two answers. But if you're starting to catch on after my incredibly articulate approach to prepare you for this, to do everything I could for you to prepare you for this moment, if you're still brain dead, if you still have a glitch, if you still think that this is nonsense, then you're going to have to wake up right now. And here's how you can do it. If you're still stupid, here's how you can get out of your bind that was programmed into you so you would never believe this. But here's the answer. Is light speed a number? The answer is yes. What kind of number? Your physicists do not know. So I'm calling on you now. 
Use your head. This is the most important question that any professor has ever asked of you. What kind of a number is light speed? It's so important that it's given the symbol lowercase c. It's so important that in the 1960s it was fixed as a rational number for all eternity, defying God himself. So obviously we take this seriously. You must take it seriously and you must get the right answer. I am the only man who can decide whether your answer is right or not. So what is your answer? What kind of a number is light speed? I'm going to give you a multiple choice. I could make it about a dozen entries or five or four or three or just two entries. Multiple choice, the minimum number of choices is two. So let's keep this simple. I could phrase this in any one of at least half a dozen forms because this is the most profound question that you will ever answer. And your physicists avoid it like the plague. They avoid ever talking about this. Is what kind of a number is light speed? Let me prompt you so you'll get on the right track, so you'll get the right answer. Is it a linear number? No. All right. It's not a linear number. How do you know that? It's because it's a fraction. That's not linear, idiot. Sorry, but I have to do this. You're either an idiot or you're going to get this and there's no middle ground. This is what your physicists hem and haw about. They're not as positive as I am because they're totally the fuck confused. So what kind of a number is light speed? Is it a linear number? It can't be. Why not? Because there are two linear numbers in light speed. Two, not one. What's the distance from your butt? What's the difference from your ass to anywhere in the room that you're in? Is that a linear number? Yes, that is a linear number. Well then, what's the difference between that number and light speed? I gave you a clue, extrapolate. Think, think! What's the difference between a simple distance, 20 feet to your front door, or 30 yards to your street corner? What kind of a number is that? Is that linear? Yes. What about light speed? What is light speed? Is it a linear number? No. Then what the fuck kind of number is it? We'll be back because that's a half an hour. You're now ready. I've tortured you enough. I won't do it again. But it was necessary. Light speed. Try to guess. Give an adjective. What kind of number is light speed? If you say two component number, you're correct. Now, what is the geometrical adjective? Is it a linear number? No. Then what geometric adjective is it? If it's not the line, 
If it's not the line, what is it? I'll give you a hint. Which direction does light propagate in? We'll be right